Oh, <clears throat> thank you so much. <laughs> Tyler, all my favorite songs today, I'm telling you, just uh, bless my heart, rung my bell, fed my soul, whatever you want to say. Uh, Tony, love, of course, Tony, you know I love, love, love that song. Leanne, you know I love, love that song. So I'm just glad I was able to get up and find nourishment and get nourishment and get here to the house of the Lord to be with you folks. Beautiful. Last message in our series on prayer, which prayer we say is the declaration of dependence upon the Lord. The declaration of dependence today, we're talking about power through prayer. God moves in a mighty way when His people pray. Going to be blessed tonight, uh, today because I've got something a little extra in store for you in the message. Not what I'm going to say, but what somebody else is going to say. That's going to be a blessing to you. So just hang on. Let's look at Jeremiah 33 3 in just a moment. Before we look there, I just want to tell you the story about a little girl who was visiting her grandpa in the, in the hospital. And she said to him, Grandpa, are, are you a frog? And he said, Well, Honey, no, I'm not a frog. Why would you say that? And she said, well, I heard Grandma say that when you croak, we're all going to go to Disney World. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it looks sounds like somebody had been praying, (laughs) you know. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Well, we're not talking about those kind of prayers. God does not, those are called imprecatory prayers where you pray death and destruction upon other people. That's an imprecatory prayer. But this is the prayer that the Lord gave Jeremiah. He says this, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and incomprehensible things that you do not know. Just, if you would, the word incomprehensible, make a note this. It has the idea behind it of secret. It could also be translated mysterious. The person who knows and seeks after the heart of God is going to have a greater understanding of the mystery and the secrets of God. In fact, often, uh, several times in Scripture, it says that God made known His secret. He made known His secrets to Moses because He was a man that was so close to God. It's a great thing to be close to God. There are mysterious secrets. Not that there is further revelation of the Word of God but that there, uh, than the Word of God, but there are understandings about the will of God that we could not know unless we call to Him. He answers, shows us, reveals, is great, and it's wonderful. Let's look at three things, very simple things today. We're going to take this verse of Scripture and we're just going to break it down and see what the Word of God has to say to us. And first of all, we see here an invitation to call. There's an invitation. He said, call to me. Call to me. Sometimes people might call you and say, I hate to bother you. Have you ever felt like saying that to God? Lord, it's me. Uh, I, I just hate to call you. And the Lord says, no, no. Lord, I know you're busy right now. No. Listen, I've also entitled this message, God's 911. It's, it is always the right time to call upon the Lord. Day or night, Good or bad, it's always the right thing to call upon the Lord, especially in times of trouble. Psalm 50 verse 15 says, Call upon me in a day of trouble, and I will rescue you. Call upon me. Trouble has a way of opening our heart to a greater understanding of the Lord. And so it's not how loud, it's not how long, it's not how argumentative we are when we call to Him, but it is how open our heart is. We say, God, I'm, I am in need right now, and I desperately need you. We feel like that there are times that God is excluding us, and that is not the case. We exclude ourselves from the Lord. He's always ready. He's always giving the invitation. When you were young, and maybe this happens to some of the young people and the children here, do you ever have the experience of an invitation being given out, and the person who gave it out was very popular? Maybe they were popular in the class Several people in the class or in the neighborhood got the invitation, but you did not. How did that make you feel? Oh, you felt rejected. You felt like, oh, I want to be with them. I want to be with them. God does not operate like that. He does not give an invitation just to exclusive few people and the rest that he shuts out. It's not the popular crowd. It's any who will call upon the Lord. He gives the call to him 
to respond. Now, I know that there are some, there are some theologians I just read recently, a, a quote from John Calvin, who basically he said this, that God gives a call. God gives a call. Only to, those who are the elect can hear the call, and therefore they are predestined to spend eternity with the Lord, and others are predestined to spend eternity in hell or uh, damnation. They are predestined unto damnation. And you know, uh, there are, you can take a verse of Scripture and you can twist anything to fit your theology. That, that is not the heart of God. That is not what the Lord says. This call is to everyone. A person goes to hell not because they've been predestined. A person goes to hell because they have rejected the call that God has given to them. It's not God's decision ahead of time. It's your decision. Your decision to reject the call. Like the burning building. Oh, I don't want to bother anybody. Or I don't need anybody. Therefore, the rescue cannot come. God is ready to rescue anyone. Call upon me in a day of trouble, and I will rescue you. Second thing is this. There's a promise that he will answer. Call unto me, he says again. He says, and I will answer you. God has promised to answer. It is his nature to answer. Now let me just give you three things to remember about how God answers when we call. Not in the outline, a little bit extra here. The first one is yes. We call to him and God answers with a yes. You might say, well, I haven't heard very many yeses. Well, ask yourself this question. Am I living according to the will of God? And am I praying according to the will of God? The Bible says when we pray according to his will... He gives us the desires of our heart. So if we are living according to the will of God and we are praying according to the will of God, you will hear far more yeses than you will hear no's. Don't, you may, people may say, well, I'm afraid of a no. That is, just a, that is a ploy of the enemy to keep us from praying. So the first answer that is given when we call to him is yes. When we live according to his will, and we pray according to His will. We find His will in the Word of God when we're led by the Spirit of God. That's not hard to understand. That really is not. The second one would be this. Deny. Denial. There's the denial. God says no. Sometimes, often He will say yes. Often, other times, He will say no. No's are fewer if you're living according to the will of God and praying according to the will of God and following the will of God that's in the Word of God. There's a no, a delay, I mean a, a denial. No, deny. I'm going to have to deny this one, just like a parent does with a child. No, can't do that. I'm denying you this opportunity. You're not going to allow me to do this. How many times have you argued with God? Have you ever argued with God? God, you're telling me no when I know a yes would be far better. And the Lord says, uh, you can't see what I can see. Kind of reminds me of the Maybe the daughter that comes to the dad and says, Dad, I really, I really want to go out with this guy or I want to marry this guy. And the dad says, no, that's not a good idea. Oh, but he's wonderful, he's wonderful. And here's what dad says. I know guys. <laughs> I art a man. Men, can you say amen? <laughs> I see things you don't see. Oh, you just don't like him. Well, you're right about that. No, no, you just don't like it. No, I see some things you don't see. And I, you know, I'm going to have to deny, you know, you may be of the age and legally you can go ahead, but I'm going to have to deny that I approve. Doesn't mean that you don't love the daughter. I'm just saying, I can see some things you can't see. So there is deny. And then the third word is there's yes, there's deny, and then there's delay. Delay. Now, which is the hardest, to deny or delay? Delay probably to me is the hardest because God says, not right now. Not right now. There's some things that we need to do. There are basically two things that God is doing, and he's bringing his power into your life through prayer when he delays. Here's what he's doing. There are things that need to be taken care of first out there. Things that need to be taken care of out there that you and I cannot see. So he says, I'm going to delay this. 
The second thing, a part of that delay is there are things out there that uh, you can't see. There are things in here that you can't see. And therefore, we're going to have to delay. You're not ready for this. You're not ready for this. You know, when I was a, a young man, I was, I was convinced that uh, when Billy Graham retired, I needed to take his place. <laughs> Just like every other young preacher probably thought. And the Lord said, you're not ready. <laughs> you're not ready. It is his nature, though. He delays in order to get things better prepared. Oh, I'm telling you, the delay. Oh, we, sometimes we cry out, we say, oh, God, how long? How long? And sometimes it's not in our lifetime that the prayer is answered. But that doesn't mean God is not answering. It is His nature. It is His character. It is His character. Do not fall into the trap of saying, God, Lord Jesus, I don't want to trouble you. Please hear. Please hear me when I say this. You never trouble Jesus when you bring your troubles to Jesus. You never trouble Jesus when you bring your troubles to Jesus. Why? It is His character to answer. It is in His character. It is a part of who He is. Now, some of you know how I am about dogs. Uh, about the same way I am about cats. Uh, so anyway... Uh, you may say, Brother Chuck, why are you that way? Just had a few experiences in my lifetime uh, in making visits and being around, and sometimes people will say, oh, don't worry. <laughs> I know my dog's barking, but, but, but he don't bite. He's got teeth, don't he? <laughs> it's in his character to bite. That's how God made him. All right. <laughs> It is, that's on the evil side. It is in the good part. It is in the beautiful part of God's character to answer. More than you want the answer, God wants to give. Look what it says in Matthew 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you shall find. You know, sometimes there are people, there are those who are out there, they're so smart. I mean, you know, they're so smart that they think that they know everything and they'll want to say, well, you know, I don't. I don't believe that. I don't believe in God. I don't believe a God that's involved with us. I don't believe in this infinite being that you talk about. And of course, you know, atheism is really now on the upward move, and people are, it's very fashionable, very fashionable to be atheistic now. And so when we talk about prayer, you know, I just kind of say, what is this? This is just a waste. It's good emotional therapy for you, and it's kind of like, will you just go ahead and pray? You just go ahead and pray. And they placate a person who prays. You just go ahead and pray because I know emotionally that's good therapy for you. Me, I go out in the woods and, and I just kind of take a walk and that's my therapy, you know, just whatever. And so they say, but as far as there being someone out there to talk to, please, we are scientists. We are smart people now. We know better. There, there are laws out there that um, th there, are, there are laws out there, scientific laws, that have to be governed by and everything works together. And so according to these laws, the universe moves and works and therefore it is not dependent upon a supernatural being. To which the answer, could, could we just, could we not just ask a question? You speak about all the laws, you, state, you talk about all the scientific reasoning and you, you that are physicists and PhDers and all of those and people who pretend that they're smart. I, I'm sure that you uh, are much smarter than I am, but I just, just got one question. Do you know everything? Do you know every law of the universe? Do you know every corner of this great vast of expanse that we call the universe? Do you? It, is it possible that there is in the corner somewhere of the recesses one who is the controller, one who is the maker, one who is the provider. So you have explored and you know everything? Please, please. Could you not entertain the possibility that because you don't know everything, that there is one who does know everything? And that were it not for his knowing everything, nothing would exist. 
Yes, it is true that we are dependent upon Him, and that by no means makes us weak. And yes, it is true that we pray to Him, and here is why. Because not only we do we see evidence of His existence, but we have experienced that evidence of His existence. There's a change that has been brought into our heart that no man on this earth can bring. There's a help that has been given to us that no, quote, therapy can provide. There's a love that has been experienced that no one else in this world can give. And I know that you haven't seen, known, or explored, or felt that. But I can tell you this, I'm a testimony that He does exist. And I'm a testimony that He does that he really does answer prayer. Do you know everything? No, you don't. Continue. Don't close your mind, don't close your heart to the fact that he does exist, that his nature is to answer. See, a person in that place cannot fathom, they cannot fathom the fact that it would be the nature of the infinite God through his son Jesus to answer the request of a small, finite being like us. But it is true. Now let's look at the last verse. An encouragement to believe. I know the plans that I have for you. You know, it was about 20 years ago that this verse of Scripture exploded on the scene. And it's kind of like people began to quote it, especially those of the more charismatic persuasion, praise the Lord for them. I was like, wait a minute, I've been reading the Bible for, you know, 20 years. I didn't know this verse existed. It's because it read differently in the King James. It says here uh, in the Christian Standard, it says, I know the plans that I have for you, plans for your well-being and not for disaster, to give you future and hope. In the King James it says this, to give you, to give you an expected end. Now in, that, in their culture, expected end, they understood what that meant, but today our culture has changed. We don't know what expected end in their English meant. And it is a very accurate translation to say that the Lord has for us that He is not going to, He is not forgiving us disaster, but He is forgiving us hope in the future. You will call to me and pray to me and I will listen. You will seek me and find me. When you search for me with all your heart and I will be found by Him. The Bible hides, I mean the sin hides the vision of God. It makes God seem remote but he has not forgotten. He repeats several times that he has plans for us. I'm telling you today, folks, we need to be in believing. The Bible tells us to believe that he answers prayer. The Bible tells us to believe that he can change anyone's life. The Bible tells us that he is the one who can provide us hope for heaven. The Bible tells us, and we have all experienced, the saving power of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I believe that he can change the hardest of hearts. I believe that he, can, that he can bring together their most divided marriage. I, I believe that, that, that he can change anyone's life from going in the, on the highway to hell to going in the direction towards God in heaven. I believe that he can bring healing to the most hopeless of hearts. And yes, I believe he can be, bring healing to those who are desperate in disease. He is the one who is powerful and He is the one who pro will provide for us what we cannot provide for ourselves. Let's pray and see and ask God to release His power through prayer. Now in just a moment, we're going to watch a video. This video is uh, Mitch Kilgore. He and, his, he and his wife Monica are here. They've been members of our church for, go ahead and let's bring it up, uh, for several years and my uh, name's Mitch and I want you to just watch and, uh, this video. All right, I've been be going to this by. church for back up and let's let's start again, all right. My name's Mitch Kilgore and um, I've been going to this church for two or three years. After twenty seven years in the Navy and I retired, I am happily and gratefully married to a wonderful Christian woman. My spiritual background was, was a little bit confused. I was saved at the altar at the age of 12. 
as I grew up, I didn't have much support as, as a child Christian. And so I was easily swayed away from uh, the persuasion of the world, especially going up through high school. The trappings of the world were something that I didn't really see coming. While I always believed in, in God as long as I can remember and tried to remain faithful to Him, at the same time, there are things in the Navy that have to do with camaraderie and hanging out and having a tight crew, which often include going out and drinking beer or whatever. And it seemed like it was always a good time. It was my brothers in arms and, and we were hoisting them. And it seems like at the end of the day, then, you know, everything was normal and back to work the next day. As I grew older, I found myself depending more and more upon alcohol. It tended to bring me away from God. I was moving further and further away from God and more strongly toward a dependence on alcohol. As time went on, I became addicted to alcohol and that came first in my life. That came before God and it came before my family. I was not the person that I once was and I was not the person I wanted to be. My wife prayed for me endlessly and at some point God had told her, this is between me and your husband. Don't worry about it. I've got him. And she didn't, but yet things got worse. We came to a point where she felt that she couldn't live this life anymore, and she rightfully left, and we were separated for two years. I lived in this big empty house by myself, and that's where God wanted me. While I prayed for several years for God to take this habit away from me, I knew it wasn't the right way. I knew it was ruining my life. In fact, my hands were shaking at the end of the workday because of withdrawal from alcohol. I felt like I was probably very close to death even though I was still a functional alcoholic. But I also knew that at some point I was going to have to start drinking at work in order just to maintain the, the blood alcohol that uh, was required for me to have a homeostasis. For I'm not sure of a better word for that, but the body needs to have that equalization. So I went to my doctor, who's, who's also a pastor, and I, I told him the truth for the first time, and I think he already knew it. And he got a hold of, of some people that actually do the rehabilitation services and I come to find out that they wouldn't have a bed available according to my insurance for six months. And that ended up being six months of desperation, six months of complete separation from God. In rehabilitation, I was there three days and three nights. It was only a matter of sobering up and while I was there I in fact did go through seizures and during this massive seizure I had no control over my body but at some point my body just fell back like this and I had no control over my limbs and I could actually feel something somewhere around the navel just leave my body. This was the peace that God was telling me you were gonna have after you actually make yourself go through this. Be it a demon, it was, I, it just felt completely supernatural to me. My need was to be next to God. The church that I, that I was going to immediately noticed a difference in me. I went and reinforced or, or re-engaged with God at, at the altar. And I knew I had a lot of work to do. Anytime that church had its door open, open, I was there. I could not stand to be away from the Spirit at any time. And though I did feel the Holy Spirit growing in me immensely, I, I mean, faster than you might expect, I knew that I needed to get my wife back. I knew that I needed to get my family back. I knew that I needed to make amends with just about everybody I know. So I uh, also went to Celebrate Recovery, which is, which is a great move, especially if, if you're first 
quitting that sort of thing. That sustained me, but at some time I also felt like Jesus was in me, His Spirit was in me. When I go to church now, I look for opportunities to serve. I seek that out because it doesn't matter what opportunity it is, what job it is. I am a servant of God first. It's so wonderful. I can sense the Holy Spirit when I walk in. I sense the Holy Spirit, and you may see me out in the congregation raising my hand to God, and maybe now you know why, because I just owe it all, owe it all to Jesus. I believe in the power of prayer so much that I don't leave the house without praying. I don't go to sleep without praying. I pray anytime I hear about somebody that is having trouble, anybody that is, is in need, I pray for them. I pray that God restore their joy. The more you pray, the closer you get to God and the closer that you start to understand you're, you're on His schedule. Things are according to His plan. The fact that alcoholics often relapse at a, at a, at a huge rate didn't necessarily apply to me because I was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's where my wife picked up that she can go in faith and come back, though she realized that, that the relapse rate for alcoholism is, is very extensive. She knew through her prayer and through her walk with God that she was able to come back. And we have rejoiced in, in the love and the faithfulness of God. He's always there. My name's Mitch Kilgore. In our men's study on Saturday mornings uh, this, earlier this year, Mitch just volunteered that testimony. I said, Mitch, have you ever shared that? He said, no, maybe once or twice in a uh, small group. I said, I, I feel like our church needs to hear that. Now, he, Hear me, folks, hear. What happened in his life is the power of prayer. Part of the story is Monica is a praying woman, and there were a lot of delays, weren't there? A lot of delays, but she didn't give up. Let that be a testimony. Let that be a testimony. She told me she would go up to a room in her house and had a prayer room where she would intercede for Mitch. If you're in that position, don't give up. Keep on praying for God to bring His power and manifest His presence. If you're in the situation that Mitch is in, you know, we, can, we all have our sin to hide. Let me, let me just tell you this. The greatest way to be delivered from pornography, alcohol, uh, you know, just whatever evil is out there, that bitterness, that, you know, there are all these books. I, I get it, I get it. This is going to disappoint you. You just have to fall in love with Jesus. You can lie to the people that you're accountable to. You can go through all kinds of steps, but until you fall in love with Jesus, it's always going to be nipping at your heels. He is, he's got to just consume your soul. Filled with the Holy Spirit, the power of prayer comes in, the chains are broken, call to Him and He will answer you, and He will tell you great, mysterious, secret things that you do not know. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful testimony that Mitch gave. Thank you for the faithfulness of Monica. And Lord, how we do pray for the person here that's, that's fighting that similar battle, that they too could be delivered. Oh, how I ask for the person who is lost and on the way, they're making the choice to deny you and reject your salvation. Oh, Father. Deliver them from that evil, from that twisted thinking. Bring salvation into their soul. Give. Give them salvation. Give them salvation, we pray. Now, if you're here today without Christ, first of all, remember this. God loves you for God so loved the world. He gave His only begotten Son. That whoever believes will receive. God loves you. God loves you so much He sent His Son. If you'll believe and repent, you'll receive 
eternal life in Christ. Come today to Christ. Wonderful, wonderful story of redemption. The wonderful story of salvation. To resurrect your dead, cold heart. Give your heart to Christ and be saved today. You're here today and you're, you know, is it possible for a Christian to be where Mitch was? Yes. And how miserable is that? You're here today away from the Lord. Come. You may be that you're not where he was, but yeah, you know your life is not where it is. If you want to come and rededicate your life, then do that. If you want to come, as God's called you to be a part of this church, come. As the Lord speaks, I'm going to pray. We'll stand and sing. Come out of sadness. Come as you are. Come to the Lord. Father, we give this invitation time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand as we sing. Thank you so much for joining us for our worship service today. The Bible says this, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. The Lord uh, is speaking to us constantly if we'll just open up our ears and listen to what he's saying. I pray that you've heard the word of God and the voice of God speak to you. And in speaking to you, if there are questions who have come, that have come up or if there are things that you need to discuss, please let us know how we can help you. Now, one more thing, the Bible also says this, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God is speaking to your heart if you've never been saved. Here's what's being said. He loves you. He sent His Son Jesus to die for you. All you have to do is this. Repent of your sins and believe, and you will receive eternal life. Please let us know if we can help you in praying and receiving Christ. God bless you. Until next time. Thank you so much for joining us for our worship service today. The Bible says this, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. The Lord uh, is speaking to us constantly if we'll just open up our ears and listen to what he's saying. I pray that you've heard the word of God and the voice of God speak to you. And in speaking to you, if there are questions who have come, that have come up or if there are things that you need to discuss, please let us know how we can help you. Now, one more thing. The Bible.